If you're struggling with a drug or alcohol addiction, now is the time to take action and get professional help. Call Recovery Centers of America at 1-800-941-2358. You are worthy of recovery from your addiction, and calling RCA will be the first step in getting the help you need. Recovery Centers of America answers the phone and admits patients 24-7, and because safety is a top priority, all patients and staff are routinely tested for COVID-19. Their expert team of physicians and medical professionals will treat you with compassion and dignity and provide an evidence-based treatment plan that's custom-tailored to your specific needs. Recovery Centers of America has detoxification and residential treatment centers across the East Coast and Midwest, and many of their treatment centers are in network with insurance providers. So RCA's best-in-class inpatient and outpatient care, which is offered both in person and via teletherapy, is affordable and accessible. Make this the year you conquer your addiction. Call 1-800-941-2358. 800-941-2358. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus. The bulbous walrus. The name your price tool. Only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for downloading Beer Nuts for free on iTunes or from ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate Beer Nuts five stars on iTunes and help to tell others about Beer Nuts by leaving a comment. Thank you for following Beer Nuts on Twitter at Beer Nuts Podcast and on Instagram at Beer Nuts Podcast. Please like the Beer Nuts Podcast on Facebook to like and share Beer Nuts. If you'd like to donate to Beer Nuts, you can click on the PayPal button at ChristopherMedia.net. If you use Amazon.com, please click and bookmark the Amazon link at ChristopherMedia.net. It will not cost you any extra money, and you will help to support Beer Nuts. If you're looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media uses HostGator to host all of the shows produced by the Christopher Media Network. When you click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net and sign up for HostGator, you are helping to support Beer Nuts. TheBroBasket.com Guys are tired of all those boring socks and ties. BroBasket is the answer to the age-old question, What do I get a guy? We know that choosing the perfect gift for a man is a difficult task, but not anymore. TheBroBasket.com is here to help. We all know men are hard to shop for, but what do guys actually like? Their favorite alcohol, that's what. It could be craft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, or tequila. TheBroBasket.com will put it in a gift basket full of their favorite gear and goodies. You can customize your own BroBasket or choose from a variety of different BroBaskets, like the Ultimate Import Sampler, the Jack and Coke Gift Set, or the Junior Executive Gift Basket. Boozeless but still cool BroBaskets are also available. TheBroBasket.com gives you many shipping options to choose from, including rush delivery and Saturdays. 21 and over, please. State and local laws apply. Beer, wine, and liquor are not available for shipping in all states. You can help to support Christopher Media by clicking through the BroBasket.com banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Alcohol gift baskets. What men really want. Men used to be hard to shop for. TheBroBasket.com. Christopher Media. Let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. Okay, everybody, welcome to Beer Nuts. I believe this is episode number 76, maybe 77, not really sure, not really sure I care. Because uh, this is uh, the Thanksgiving holiday period. We're recording this on Thanksgiving Eve, one of the biggest drinking nights of the year. So, uh... I'd like to introduce, we have five beer nuts here. Uh, we're going to do a cellar raid. So each of us has selected a beer from our cellar. So I'd like to introduce everyone. First off, welcome back, Greg, our most valuable listener. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Dugout's here with us. Hey, how are, how's everybody doing? Uncle Pete. All right, good to be here. And we have SAK with us here. Welcome, Steve. Hello, everybody. And yours truly, Jr. So, really good, uh, good lineup here tonight for everybody. But as always, uh, before we get started, let's uh, invite everybody to crack something out of your own cellar or from your no- friendly neighborhood local beer store. We're not pretentious here. Drink whatever you like, dilly dilly. And uh, there's always room for you at our table. We just like exposing more people to more good beer. So, that being said, let's uh, let Pete take it away for quote of the week. 
All right. Well, with Thanksgiving and the holidays upon us, I thought I'd do a quote that uh, was close to uh, Thanksgiving and, and good dining. So Ernest Hemingway uh, gave us a quote here that said, It was as natural as eating, and to me, as necessary, and I would not have thought of eating a meal without drinking a beer. So as you join in uh, tomorrow on Thanksgiving with your family and your friends and neighbors, please break out the good beers like we're doing tonight with the Cellar Raid and uh, share and have a great day. Have a great holiday, everybody. Cheers to that. Uh, Cheers, Cheers, everybody. everybody. Well, this episode will be airing after Thanksgiving, but you will all know that we will be uh, slightly hung over tomorrow by the tremendous uh, high-gravity beers we're about to consume. So let's uh, go right into the show, and uh, always fun to do a cellar raid. Uh, always uh, nice to have uh, an opportunity to share something with others uh, that... Uh, has been aging in your cellar, and we're going to start off with Greg. I think Greg's got a, uh, a pretty big sour to share with us, so take it away, Greg. Well, thanks, Jer. Yeah, it's a, it is a pretty big sour, 9.8% Cascade uh, Brewing Company out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, this is their 2014 Sang Noir, which is a, uh, uh, let's see, it's a, uh, let's uh, Imperial Spice Red Ales, multiple ale, red ales aged in bourbon and wine barrels. And then they also add Bing cherries, which, of course, they age these in barrels for about two years. Uh, this thing pours a deep mahogany brown. It, uh, it a little bit through there. It's not totally, uh, you know, uh, dark in color, but you can see some light come through and the uh, the smell on there is uh, you get nice sweet cherries, uh, along with that funkiness that uh, you expect from a sour. And taking a drink out of this, mm. awesome stuff. It starts out real sweet, has that nice sweet cherry flavor to it, but right away it it transitions right over to that uh, that horse blanket funkiness. Um, Little bourbon, just a little bourbon in there. This is, you know, three years, four, two, three years old now. But uh, very dry on the finish. But, you know, overall, fantastic sour. Excellent. Yep. You know, big bottle, 750 milliliters. So I got my work cut out for me today. But uh, excellent, excellent stuff. Really like this stuff. Anything I've had from Cascade uh, has been top notch. I don't know about you guys if you had any as well. Well, I just want to say when you mentioned Cascade, my, uh, I guess, life-changing sour that I had uh, that I'm sure I've mentioned this before on the show was at a share at the Bell's anniversary party, a uh, young lady in, uh, sit seated in the bleachers as we were waiting to go in, we were having a share, uh, handed me, poured me a, a glass of Blackberry Cascade sour, and it was the first sour that I was, was like, was mind-blowing to me, and I couldn't wait to go out and buy a bottle after that, which up to that point, sours were kind of like, eh, I'm not sure I really like sours very much. Right, so, sure. So uh, that that was my uh, first response, just to, to know that you're drinking a Cascade always uh, will always be a, a special brand for me because of that one experience. And I have had some of their sours since then, and uh, yeah, that's, those are some of the best. So, uh Descri uh, the way you described this one, I, I wish I was there with you to help you take it down, but uh, perhaps another dime. But uh, yeah, enjoy it; time. sounds great. Yeah, absolutely. This is fantastic stuff. Anybody else want to comment on Cascade? Okay, well, hmm. we got a couple more big hitters here, so thank you for sharing that one, Greg. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go right into mine now because I'm really thirsty. So uh, what I have in my cellar here today is a 2013 Firestone Walker Succuba, which is abacus spelled backwards. Um, it is a barrel-aged barley wine ale. Um, it's 12.5% uh, by volume. I believe it was uh, aged uh, in multiple different barrels. Do a little uh, wet research and kicking it around and uh, it looks like every year is a little different and I haven't really been able to find the exact uh, breakdown for this 2013. So uh, instead of uh, researching it, I'm just going to sip it. 
because that's what it's all about, drinking it. So it's uh, got a really nice ruby. To ruby, it even shines like a ruby in the light, like a nice deep red, uh, really nice. Uh, you can see through it, but it's got a nice little glow to it. So it's a reddish brown, uh, beautiful looking. Uh, not much of a head on it, which you wouldn't expect with this style. Uh, I get the, the nice dark fruit uh, in their aroma, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of barrel. And that's, uh, as you would expect, that is a, a very complex flavor. Um, oh, man, it's uh, really, really good. Uh, you can tell it's strong, but it's not alcohol strong. I think the age is nice to this and mellowed it out, but I'm definitely getting a lot of complex dark fruits. I can get a little bit of uh, caramel and vanilla. Just uh, Like so many beers, this is one that uh, the flavor profile changes dramatically as the temperature changes. And it's it's a different beer now than it will be in half. Well, and here I'm sitting in a remote location away from you guys and completely jealous that you have this beer. SAK, you originally turned us on, turned me on to this beer at a, uh, it was a pretty epic bottle share at your house a few years back. And um, I've since procured a few bottles, and they don't last. I don't know how you can sell that stuff. I, I just don't, because I see it, and I'm like, oh, oh, mine. <laughs> yeah, drink it, drink it, drink it. Yeah. I tell yeah. you, it's it, a yeah, sweet. Yeah, it calls out to me on my, on my shoulder, right? Drink me, drink me. Yeah, the devil on your shoulder. It, it's a sweet, caramely, um, very malty. Got a nice alcohol uh, warmth to it. It's warming me up just as it rolls across my palate. It's a sipper. It's it's not a chugger. We're not in a race to the finish line. And thank God that this is one you can sell her for a while and just let it mellow out because it's so smooth and sweet. I love it. Yeah, and I did you know find what, a little guys, bit of a review let's be on Let's honest here. Let's be honest here. I mean, have you had... In- really any or many of Firestone Walker's beers that have ever been like anything other than just some of the best stuff you've ever had. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, I I have quite a few of theirs in the cellar because of that. And whenever I have an opportunity to get some, especially since we don't have distribution in Michigan. So whenever I'm out of state and I see that on the shelf, I'm like, Oh, I got to have that. So, uh, but yeah, I've got quite a few uh, different. Uh, you know, they have Sticky Monkey, uh, El Dorado's, another blonde barley wine, of course, Parabola, their Imperial Stout. Uh, all, yeah, I agree with you, Doug. There, you just can't go wrong with with their stuff. And I want to share this. Uh, I did find a review, a uh, little bit of description, better description than I probably provided. But it says big boozy bourbon and American oak aromas combined with soft chocolate malty undertones, complex malt flavors framed in oak with hints of dark chocolate, vanilla, tobacco, coconut, and just a touch of dark cherry. This is definitely a sipping beer, best served in a brandy snifter. This ale pairs well with dark chocolate and sturdy cheeses. So that's a little bit more of a fancy fancy description, description, but I definitely get the dark dark cherry, the dark fruits, tobacco, little complex, uh, you know, different layers of dark chocolate, you know, some sweet, some bittersweet, a tad of vanilla, yeah, I'm not sure I'm getting coconut, but... Everything else is spot on, and it, like you said, uh, Doug, this is just uh, it's a treat every time I'm uh, fortunate enough to be drinking this. And in a 22-ounce uh, bottle, there's no way I'm taking this down alone, so I'm really happy to have two good beer nuts here to, to help me take it down. It's, it's a monster. <laughs> Who loves you, buddy? We're going to help you out. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, you, guys, thank you guys for taking one for the guys, team. Guys, you do your duty, right? I tell you, I mean, I love to sit. And just sit here and enjoy this for the duration. It's one of those evening beers on a cold November night. And build a fire and sit back in your comfortable chair and just ponder the ponder the wonders of the world. This is a great beer. All righty then. Well, we were going to go to you next, Pete, but I think we're going to let Doug take his while you're sipping that because Doug's probably really thirsty too. So, Doug, why don't you go ahead and share your beer with us next? All right, I will. And and yeah, don't worry about me being thirsty. I had a already opened this quite some time ago because uh <laughs> unlike you guys it's just me right now so no share i gotta i gotta kill this because i opened it 
So what I have is sort of one of these, I don't know, epic beers, the ones that started the whales, if I could be so bold, right? I mean, didn't Dark Lord start the whale beer category? Because that's what I got, Dark Lord from Three Floyds. And uh, for those of you who don't know, that Dark Lord is a uh, festival that's held at the brewery every year. and um, They have a whole bunch of different releases of their beer, all variants of Dark Lord, which is a Russian Imperial Stout. Um, I believe it's uh, coffee, vanilla, Indian sugar. Anybody want to help me out on that one? Um, And funny thing about it is I was looking stuff up on the internet, and there's just so much on this beer. It's just so cult-like. Anyways, I got this. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, Christmas. It was a 2015, I believe, with the purple wax. Got this a uh, couple of Christmases ago. Um, went to my aunt's house way in the south suburbs of Illinois, really close to the Indiana border. On the way back, my sister and my nephew said, hey, let's stop at uh, Three Floyds, see what they got in the store. We went in there, and they had Dark Lord for sale. We're like, yeah, give us bottles. <laughs> so that's where this one came from. Um I'll get into some of the some of the tweets in a little bit because I found this site that had uh, Dark Lord 2015 in tweets, uh, and I'll just read a couple from them. Uh, they're pretty funny. But let's go back. The, the beer pours like motor oil. It is thick, dark, viscous. Um, it's just the most motor oil you can get. 10W30. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, like that's been sitting in your car for ten years. That kind of <laughs> <laughs> that color. So um, it's it's really complex. Uh, the aroma is sort of hints of chocolate, caramel, dark fruit. Um, the flavor is just just so much going on. I mean, you've got like, prunes and uh, coffee and chocolate and raisins and there's nothing in particular that stands out it's just this thick and i know uh, we've used this term on this podcast before but beer up you know beer syrup this just really puts it down like it's thicker than maple syrup almost um man this is tasty there's not much of a head to it it falls through pretty quick but this beer is so thick i can't see any head standing up in this uh, carbonation is good. Uh, I, I just blown away, really, really blown away by this. I don't know if you guys have had this one, Purple Wax. Uh, I was what, told what year? What year is that? I was told 2015 was Purple Wax. I'm not sure if I've ever had that vintage or not, but uh, certainly wish I was there uh, helping you drink it because uh, yeah, you were describing, it and I was really jealous until I took another sip of my sucker uh, and that kind of. Oh Help yeah, me feel yeah. a little bit better about myself again. <laughs> but I mean, those, uh, you know, I love that. Those that beers, you know, you put these beers together like those two, and you have one sip of that one, one sip of that one. They're night and day, um, but they're they're just up there in the, I guess, quality range of just what's extreme but extremely drinkable as well. This this falls into that. I know there's been some complaints on some years of Dark War that. Kind of get the soy sauce to it. This has none of that. I mean, it's really thick, rich body. Um, I can't say enough about it. Five stars, man, big time. Well, I've I've heard that. I've heard it. If you drink it when it's fresh, it's uh, some people do get that soy sauce flavor. It's it's meant to be aged for a while, and I'm sure a little bit of age is, has improved it. That being. I also heard that the latest vintage, the 2017, is pretty good right out of the gate, which is uh, uh, not not the norm for this. But uh, regardless, it's a like it's an iconic iconic beer. I love the the thick mouth feel of it, and it's a 15 percent. It's certainly not for the weak. It's not for everybody, but uh, it's certainly uh, it's something that I wish I was drinking right now with you. So. Um, Great beer to share on the show. Uh, for those of you who have not had it, hopefully you can seek some out. It is only available one day a year at the brewery, Dark Lord Day. So uh, you snooze, you lose. 
Yep. Steve, you probably now, had this before a few times. I've had that uh, one. Uh, uh, Steve, I was fortunate Steve, enough to go to Dark Lord Day a couple your mic on. of years ago, and uh, then I had some friends who brought me in. Is it just me or is his mic terrible? No, it's he's everything about is cut out. <clears throat> Can Steve get up to John or uh, mine or Mike? John? Okay. okay. Yeah. I was saying is that better? Okay, hang on, we can edit this out. Yeah, yeah. Just have him start where he started. <laughs> <laughs> Which from wherever that was, was. <laughs> I have no idea I'll start over uh, I was fortunate to go to Dark Lord a couple of years ago and since then I've, uh, I had some friends who've given me various vintages and uh, it, that day is a hoot I mean it's chaos and it's crazy and there's music and there's beer and the, the sharing is very very generous uh, people come from all over the United States and stand in line and drink beer and share you some share some gems um I know that Dark Lord has kind of become a, a, a beer that a lot of people kind of like to hash on. Um, you know, almost cool to not like it sometimes, you know, uh, accuse it of being soy sauce. Um, but I think it's wonderful. Um, and anything that somebody doesn't want to drink, they are more than welcome to pass it on because it is delicious. Doug, Doug, have you ever been? I have not been. Um, and shame on me for not going... My friend uh, Bruce Lamont's band has played there umpteen years of it. Like at the beginning, his band was playing there. Um, I just, I got to do it, right? But every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think, oh my God, am I up for this anymore? <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have gone in years past. Uh... You know, I worked in Chicago quite a bit and would go to Three Floyds all the time. My hotel was only a couple of miles from Three Floyds, but I know I know in 2015 I was there at Three Floyds at least the day before Dark Lord Day, and they were all set up with the tents and had the parking areas all set up. And, you know, they're prepared for tens of thousands of people to roll in from all over the country. In fact, probably from around the world, I think people fly in, but, you know, if you're lucky enough to get a Dark Lord from Three Floyds, just open it up and enjoy it. And like you are, Doug, I mean, you're lucky to be there by yourself. I wish I was there with you to share. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd prefer to share it. Um, uh, I got uh, I, When I was searching Dark Lord, I came across a site, which was Dark Lord 2015. Um, and it's the... It's a comp uh, compilation of tweets from it, and some are kind of interesting. So we're going to put some beer quotes inside of our beer quotes. Uh, and here's the one I love. It's by Alkaline Trejo. If you're going to Dark Lord, remember to pace yourself. You don't want to be the guy passed out on the pallet at 10 a.m. Hashtag <laughs> DLD. <laughs> don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of party, though. I mean, you see stuff on uh, uh, people's feeds that are there, and somebody just smashed their like fifty dollar bottle of beer because they stumbled. And, uh, but you see pictures of just epic bottles of beer lined up everywhere. Um, this particular year, I guess it happened to be piss and rain, which really makes always makes for a great outdoor fest. And um, <laughs> I encourage anybody to to uh, just sort of Google it, and it's, it's it's a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. Uh, that's it. I mean, what a great beer! One of these years of beer nuts, we got to get down there together for one of those events. As long as we yeah, don't have yeah, to record yeah. anything. Yeah, I, I mean, we'd have to have somebody that would record for us that would stick a mic in our face and just tell us what to say. You know, pretty much. <laughs> well, you were talking about how some, uh, or Steve had mentioned about how it's almost cool to, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, be critical on of, it. of the dark yeah. <laughs> Lord. 
but I, I will have a you know hardcore beer people that go there. They're seeking the variants that they put out because in, in addition to the regular dark lord, there's all kinds of different variants like the uh, the hand G, which is the marshmallow variant, I believe. Um, what are some of the other ones? Uh, French vanilla militia. I think that's the vanilla one. There's a whole bunch of different. Uh, so Moscato, you know, and, and it's, it's just completely random when you buy a ticket and you go in. I believe it's just completely random which variant that you end up with, and you know, people are like, you know, either jumping for joy when they see what their variants are, or they're disappointed that they didn't get one of the big time. Uh, but you know what? What a fun party it sounds like. Uh, you know, I, I've seen all the pictures and I've heard all the stories. Uh, I also have yet to experience, so maybe that would be a great beer nuts. Uh, you know, maybe Uncle Pete can fire up that RV one of these years and have a place for us to uh, pass out. Because I have a feeling that most people don't really sleep there. I think they just uh, kind of <laughs> fade away. I think <laughs> better to burn out than to fade up, away, right? <laughs> the hotels book up very early. There's not tons of hotels, but there are in the vicinity, and you know, really, if if you can get an Uber to drive you in there uh, for the day, then you know, good luck getting one out when the when it ends. But um, you know, what a great party! Can I try my mic again? Coming through it all. Okay. Yeah. I know that uh, when we went down there, there were a lot of guys that came from Chicago, and I think there were a lot of tour buses. Uh, beer buses that came and, and people who knew the way of uh, the L and the subway system, you know, were fine with just coming in uh, for the day and getting, uh, you know, walking to the bus stop and eventually working their way back to Chicago. So, you know, somebody who, uh, you know, a lo- somebody who's not local like me would want to do a, a hotel or motel down in Munster, Indiana. But uh, I think if you knew the way uh, the, the way around Chicagoland, you would be very safe. Uh, taking trains and uh, trains and automobiles. Yeah, I mean it is a bit out of the the metropolis of Chicago. It is in Indiana and Munster, as you said. So it is a few miles down the road and just over the state line. Uh, but from my experience in working out there, I always stayed in uh, Indiana on the Indiana side. Plenty of hotels, lots of other breweries in the area as well. It's not like Three Floyds is the only one in the area. So. There's a, you know, in, in, in that area of the country, you're, you're going to find a whole bunch of great places to go and have some good beers. But Dark Lord Day, definitely a, a once-in-a-lifetime shot if you want to go do it. And certainly uh, Three Floyds Brewery in general is a great place to go hang out for a day. Never a dull moment. One of those places that plays vinyl right there at the bar, right behind the bar, they spin all the vinyl records. And don't go and ask for uh, them to put sports on the TV. It's kind of the, against the rules. No TV, uh, no sports. The uh, last time I was there, they were playing Dead Kennedys, and uh, had the Warriors on TV. So, oh, awesome! There's some, there's some different cats there. <laughs> that's man, well, that's if there's great. no sports, then that's uh, great. probably no Nickelback either, right? Uh, I can remember their original place in in Hammond, and it was just kind of a hole in the wall. Uh, was there one time, and they were just working their asses off, making really good beers, and for them to get to this level and just grind it out, do the hard work, and make these incredible products for people to drink is my hats off to those guys. All right, cheers to Three Floyds, and cheers. We'll drink to the Dark Lord. And up next, I think Uncle Pete's going to take us to Delaware, Dogfish Head, little 120-minute action. Take it away, Pete. That's right. We're going back to the East Coast now, to Delaware. Dogfish Head Brewery with uh, our buddy Sam Collegioni. This 120-minute uh, IPA, I got a 2012. It's supposed to age very well, uh, according to the label here. This is uh, this is a uh, holy grail for hop heads. And 120-minute uh, means that... Uh, this thing was continuously hopped for two hours during the boil when they were cooking this beer and uh, continuously hopped for 120 minute boil and then dry hopped for over a month and you can age this beer according to the label for up to a decade 
This is a 2012, so it's only five years old. So, you know, highly hopped beers, normally you find that they're going to fall off. But I think one like this that has uh, over 100, probably around 120 international bittering units, even after five years, there's going to be plenty of hoppiness left in this thing. It's a high alcohol content. It doesn't say on the label what it is, but I think it's somewhere between 15 and 20 ABV. And uh, it's an imperial IPA. So this, this is going to be a hot, a hot, hoppy mess right here. So let's see what's happened to it. Who's got a glass? Oh, I got one. <laughs> I didn't think I had one. Oh, pick me. Here, JR, you're next. I just poured a little bit. Let me see what I got going on here. So, okay. Pours a bit of a, a, a bit of a haze. A little bit of a haze with a white, uh, small white head on it. The aroma is prominent, a uh, lot of hoppiness in the in the aroma. Oh my goodness! They used a, uh, a apparently they use a device called Sir Hops a lot, which is their uh, part of their brewing equipment at Dogfish Head that does the uh, continuous hopping. But oh my goodness, it is very aromatic. Eighteen percent ABV. Holy smokes! But it has a nice uh, copperish orange color, uh, very citrusy and piney on the aroma, very sweet smelling. I get a lot of malt as well. I mean, this is going to be a, a heavy, with a high alcohol, there's got to be tons of malt and tons of grain bill on this recipe. Let's take a taste. Yeah, this is not a light body whatsoever. Uh, this is a very syrupy, uh, sweet, um, very syrupy. And that's all I could say is syrupy and sweet. I mean, those are the two things right off the bat. And uh, it doesn't have a drying bitterness, but it's a very pleasant uh, kind of a citrusy bitterness to me. I like it. It, it just kind of sticks with you. It's sticky. Uh, very, very sticky and syrupy. Guys, what do you think, Jr.? Uh, well, it's uh, first thing that strikes out at me is how murky it is. It's like a murky, cloudy uh, appearance, and it's uh, like a light orange to brown. But it's uh, it's lost a lot of its hop characteristics, but the bitterness is still there. Yet. There's just so much going on here that you get some sweet malt, too. So it's almost got some fruitiness to it. Smooth, malty, uh, and it's definitely really, really boozy. <laughs> the booze, it doesn't taste like that fusel alcohol, but you can feel the alcohol uh, in every other way. Um, you can tell it's really strong. It just doesn't have that you know crisp pop bite that you would like to see, but... Uh, um, Obviously, after five years, a lot of that's faded away, but the, there's enough bitterness in here that it, it balances out the the sweet malt. And so you got sweet, you got malt, you got hot bitterness, and you got a lot of booze. It's boozy, but somehow it all works together, and it's uh, and it's not for the weak. It's a it's a butt kicker for sure. I think after five years in the cellar, we're doing cellar raids tonight. I think compared to a fresh one, if, if we bought one right now and opened it, it would be a lot hotter right now than this one is. I think this one, personally, it, it kind of came together and, and mellowed out a bit. It is hot, but it, I don't think it's as hot as if we cracked one right now from 2017. No, and that would be a really cool thing to, to do next time is to you know taste a fresh one against this um, to see the difference, but... Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty smooth for you know, but it's still uh, it's still a butt kicker at eighteen percent, and you can tell. But it 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 does it's not a sharp it's it's more mellow butt kick. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, if anybody needs a tattoo removed, this is the stuff for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's what I think is so cool about what they're doing is they're making a beer born to seller, and. You know, we've talked uh, a couple of different episodes about beers that 
we've had, and, and we've done other cellarades before. Um, but we've taken beers that we've had and cellared them, but they weren't designed possibly by the brewery for that. So, you know, the, the actual flavor degrades or does not improve over age. And I think so far, everything we've had has been the opposite of that to be like, okay, yeah, born a cellar. I mean, put this in a cellar three, three years, five years, seven years. And now this beer is coming to fruition and it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I know that beer and I've had a few vintages of it and I've always been impressed by, you know, the longer you leave it in, the better it's going to be. Yeah. We, we've had a few dogfish head beers over the course of the beer nuts podcasts. You know, we, I remember doing minus touch and, uh, ones like that. And, and, you know, I love what they do. They try to push the envelope and really go all out with some of their beers. They do make versions of their IPA. There's a 60-minute and a 90-minute IPA, which means they had hops to the boil for a shorter amount of time, whereas this 120-minute is a two-hour boil, where it really, it really, uh, when you're continuously hopping for two hours, I mean, you're going to get a lot of alpha acids in there from all those, those great hops. And if you're doing a 60-minute for an hour, I mean, you're going to get less bitterness. Still a great-tasting beer. But, uh, you know, at a 120-minute boil with the amount of grain and the amount of hops they put in, like you said, it's born to sell her. Well, and you want to talk uh, beer up, Doug. This is definitely beer up. Certainly, if you are expecting a, uh, an IPA when you are sipping this, uh, you're going to be shocked. Um, this has some of the characteristics of an IP that you forgot about and sat in the back of your fridge for a while. But whereas that will just kind of fall off and be boring or bland, this has become more complex with age. Um, you know, like Pete said, it had the it has the bitterness and the complexity. Um, but if you can think of something that falls off and then tastes better, um, this is kind of what it is. But if you are expecting... Uh, in a traditional IPA, you might as well go to the 60-minute because uh, this is not going to be your cup of tea. Well, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Dogfish Head. We always appreciate you guys uh, putting out some of the great beers, and uh, we really appreciate this five-year-old 120-minute IPA. Amen. Good stuff. I think we got one more grand finale left here that uh, – I'm going to pass it over to Steve. He can introduce the grand this evening's grand finale. Well, we might need a little bit of time here because there is wax involved. Doug, I need your, uh, <laughs> your wax opener. <laughs> That's thick, thick, heavy wax. Like, scrape up from, but use a butter knife or something dull. That's not going to stick in your, like, finger or anything like that. And you just got to scrape around that ridge and Eventually, it'll open up. Yeah, just uh, it's all for time, guys. We're working on it. (laughs) We're we're hacking on it right now. Well, you know. So this is the segment where Chris will edit it out and he'll play like some cool music, like Jeopardy. (laughs) Sounds like he needs a blowtorch to get that off. You do actually. Uh, Actually, uh, Chris, cue up some raspberry beret for this one. That will be an appropriate tune. I don't want to steal Steve's thunder. I'm going to let him introduce his beverage. Okay, we got success. All right. The wax has been removed, and Steve, wax on, about your wax, wax off. on, wax off. Oh, oh man, I'm jealous that. right now. I, I was seriously Mark. jealous. I have one, but that's not getting open tonight. <laughs> And these Every, are still for sale at the we're, brewery, we're at the original brewery, if anybody's interested. This is um, Raspberry Eesbach from Coonan here in, uh, what, Warren, I think. This is a 2012 vintage. I think uh, Andrea Stevens and I picked this up uh, at the brewery when it was released. And still have a couple of them in our cellar. John can probably go into some of the specifics about Easebox, but my understanding is it is a brew that they then freeze and scrape the ice off the top. 
thereby kind of concentrating the alcohol and the flavor with what's left, and eventually they bottle it. So this starts off at 15.5% ABV. Um, I don't know how long it takes to scrape ice and get down to this, uh, or get up to that ABV, but this is one of those that uh, is very, very well thought of, where sought out. Um, has some detractors. Let me take a sip here. <clears throat> To a certain, a yeah, very, very strong raspberry smell. Almost, you could say medicinal. I don't think it's in a bad way. You hold it up to a bright enough light, you can see. It's a, it's a little hazy brown. Not as red as you might expect from a raspberry beer. So they did not include any kind of fake uh, coloring here. Very, very thick. Very, very little carbonation. Wow. It, uh, it is, uh, you're being hit over the head with raspberries here. There is definitely some alcohol here, but um, it is a raspberry bomb. Just on the aroma for my uh, sniffer, I mean, it's raspberry jam. If yeah. this was thick like jam, I could spread it on a toast. I mean, it smells fabulous. It's so thick, fruity, and thick smelling with raspberries. There's no head whatsoever. I mean, no. this is like a syrup. Like a liqueur. Like a liqueur, like an after dinner, like an aperitif. Wow. This is amazing. It's 15.5% alcohol, and it just got bursting with raspberry flavor, bursting with raspberry aroma. Um, there's a little bit of alcohol in it, but it's not a burning alcohol. It's a nice, you know, perfect level, really. Uh, you're correct. Uh, that's how they make an ice block. They, you know, freeze it and uh, yeah. remove some of the, you know, the water. And what's left is a concentrated product, and it's all raspberry and all delicious. Uh, not much else to say. It's wish I could come up with some more complex uh, notes for you, but it's fruity, raspberry, strong, and just a uh, absolute delight to sip. I've heard people, uh, you know, people who are detractors, uh, you know, compare it to a cough syrup, and I can see the the comparison. I happen to think that's a good thing. Now, I don't know about uh, Doug or Pete or or John or Greg. Um, I have seen these box or ice wines. Um, how is this different than a in ice wine? And how? Does it check. somehow get into the craft beer genre? Oh, well. All right. I heard half of that question. It's, Hold on. We're yeah, gonna, you got to gotta re-record that question. I have a fantastic answer for it. But I checked. <laughs> okay. You got to start there, it over in a solid mic. I'm back. I'm back. Um, Let's start over with that question. Okay. Let me say, uh, I have a detractor. It's a question for uh, you guys. Uh, there are a lot of detractors. This, uh, this All right, it's room. Don't, oh, stop, stop, stop. Somebody else's mic in the room is on, or? Probably Steve's, because mine is muted. I'm being... Okay, try it now, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, there are some detractors here. You know, they, they, they joke and say this is like cough syrup. Um, I don't think that's such a bad thing, but... Uh, I was going to ask you guys, and I'm not, I don't know the answer to this. Um, this is an ice brew or ice beer, ice bock. Um, I've seen ice wines. How is this classified as a beer as opposed to a wine or uh, a spirit? I've heard some um, stories that perhaps this was not a, initially a legal thing for them to produce because it was considered a distilled product, ice distilling. Um, what do you guys know about that, if anything? Well, well, obviously, obviously a wine, wine is made from grapes. So this is not made from grapes. So that rules it out as really being a wine. As far as being a spirit versus a beer, perhaps the method that they use uh, could be fall under scrutiny. I don't really know how they would do that. Um, and they've been allowed to continue making it. So 
Not sure where that would come from, uh, other than maybe the strength, and you know, maybe it borderlines on. Uh, you're not distilling. Distilling is, you know, uh, you know, putting beer like this and making it into to vapors, and then cooling the vapors into a spirit. So this is not a distilled product, and it is not a wine. So anybody that makes that assertion, in my opinion, is wrong. And besides, I really like it. So uh, tell those people to go away. <laughs> well, why, you know, well I and, and really, ice, ice wine go. is a very regional uh, product uh, for us here in Michigan. There are quite a few uh, wineries up in, particularly up in the Traverse City area, uh, Leelanau County, um, that produce these wines. And basically, the wine is taken from grapes that are frozen. They're ripe, but then frozen, and then everything they have about them is concentrated. So all that all that uh, concentrated sugars are then incorporated into this batch of wine, and it's already high ABV. And then they take another ice layer off the top by freezing it and taking uh, extracting water out of the um, mixture. So then it becomes even more concentrated. Um, Incredible wines, um, are pricey. I mean, you pay a good amount of money for a three fifty bottle. Um, you know, sometimes up in twenty, thirty dollar, forty dollar range for a three hundred fifty milliliter bottle. So you know, you're talking like high end product, and that's what ice wine is. So I think these guys have really done a good job of like representing what that is into a beer and that's it, it's creative and it's totally on them i mean i don't think i've ever heard of another brewery doing some what they're doing or something like they're doing with that beer and i know there's been a blueberry and a raspberry um and and you know the, the they take so long to produce and it couldn't be in kunin just you know you might have a release of it at some point and, yeah, I'll go get one. I mean, they have them at the brewery now. You can go get a raspberry ice box. Um, just fantastic stuff. I think the common denominator between ice wines and ice bock is the concentration of flavor. And this is certainly concentrated in its fruit flavor. Um, like you said, dug out, and even in... Like in northern Michigan, there's a lot of ice wine, but our friends over in Ontario, Canada, there's a great region on your way to Toronto from the Detroit area up in the escarpment when you get into the ice wine region and there's a climate that allows for the grapes to be frozen on the vine, which comes Oh, absolutely. That's, that's <clears throat> sort of the best in the world, in the whole yeah, world. Yeah, between, I think, Germany and Canada, they're probably the biggest outputters of ice wines, but... You know, the difference, too, is with an ice box, the freezing and the extraction of the frozen water becomes after fermentation, where in an ice wine, the freezing happens with the grapes before they're pressed, and all of the concentrated sugars from the grape, minus the water, are taken into the fermentation. So it, they're both great uh examples of a concentrated uh you know alcoholic beverage i love i love the ice box i'd love to taste some of the other fruit flavors but this uh this one here is just fabulous yeah it is you know and you you hit the nail on the head by pointing out those differences between the ice one and the ice box but you know as home brewers you know we could uh living here in michigan on a 15 degree night we could leave our, our fermenter bucket outside after it's done fermenting and let it freeze overnight and tip off whatever uh, freezes at the top and do the same type of thing. That's basically all you're doing is, uh, you know, the, uh, you'll get uh, some stuff that freezes at the top, and when you remove that, it's going to make the, what's left uh, a much stronger uh, a beer. So that would be an ice beer. So, But... Um, We'll leave that to the professionals, and certainly Coonan uh, has done a wonderful job with this and and with all their ice box. So hats off to Coonan Brewing, uh, a brewery that dear to our hearts that we've always loved. God bless them. You know, they do some crazy stuff. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, they make some great beers, and we're happy to have them close by. 
Very fortunate. So I think that's about it for our celebration so tonight. We have a couple, we have more. A couple more beers here, but uh, I think we have enough left uh, to finish in the bottles we've opened. So we're going to, I think, uh, take some closing comments and wrap the show up. And have everybody uh, get ready for some tryptophan uh, tomorrow. And, of course, by the time the episode's over, uh, the hangovers will have been come and gone. And, uh so there you have it. Anybody else? Let's go around the horner. And uh, any uh, closing comments for Thanksgiving, Greg? No, nah, hey man, everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope your meals are plentiful and your naps are are very enjoyable afterwards. So, uh, cheers to everybody. Hope you have a, have a great time and some good beers. Hey Amen. Happy Thanksgiving, Greg. Uh, Doug out. Closing well, comments. Yeah, just happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I mean, you'll hear this after the fact. Um, just really enjoy doing the show. Really enjoy anybody that's willing to listen to us. Um, no, I'm just kidding about that. But, you know, just be thankful for everything you have. And, and sometimes it's the simplest things that are the most blessed in your life. So enjoy that and enjoy this holiday. Amen. Amen. Pete? Well, I tell you, I'm thankful for great craft beer, and I'm thankful for uh, the camaraderie of the beer nuts. I think we got a good thing going here, guys. So happy Thanksgiving to you guys, and happy Thanksgiving to all our listeners. Cheers. Steve, closing comments? If you can. Certainly, I'd like to say uh, happy Thanksgiving to anyone who happens to be listening to us uh, after, again after the fact. Um, I do think it was interesting that we all pulled uh, from our cellars uh, some pretty uh, respectable beers. Uh, you know, some big breweries, some well thought of breweries, some breweries that uh, that do a lot of things very well. Uh, Firestone Walker certainly makes some great IPAs. Uh, you know, I, again, I wish we had distribution here. Coonan, great stuff. Uh, you know, Dark Lord, it's not just Dark, I'm sorry, Three Floyds, it's not just Dark Lord that's great. I mean, a lot of great IPAs they make. And Cascade certainly is one of the, uh, at the forefront of some of the sour or wild ales. Um, so I'm glad that we, we got things that have kind of a national presence, not just, I mean, certainly Coon is maybe a little more local, but I think uh, nationally they have a reputation. So uh, excellent choices, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. Okay, and uh, last but not least, again, I know that by the time you hear this, thanks everyone be over, but we can always be thankful for, for some of the great beers that we get to enjoy here in Michigan. And uh, as somebody that moved here five, uh, about six years ago, certainly thankful for all the great uh, friends I've met, Beer Nuts, uh, you know, having Greg as a listener come in and, and be a part of our Beer Nuts family, thankful for, for that, uh, just, uh, you know, S.A.K., uh, Dugout, and, and Uncle Pete, you know, uh, and the beer nuts that aren't with us tonight, uh, you know, Ross from North Carolina, uh, Dan, Lieutenant Dang out in Missouri, and everybody else that's been our little circle of, uh, of beer nuts friends. Uh, oh, Christopher. Really tr- Christopher. <laughs> well, Christopher's uh, <laughs> saving for the best for last, <laughs> certainly uh, made this all possible uh, by reaching out to us about uh, doing this uh, podcast so you know i guess uh kind of a bummer that he's not with us here tonight but he's with us in spirit all the time and uh yeah just thankful for uh everything uh, that we have available to us here and uh, and for great friends so that about does it and so in closing i'm thankful for you all our listeners for uh making it worth all all our while to do all these shows so um as always, I think it's time uh, to go to Mexico. So, as they say in old Mexico City, A-L-F. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net, and thank you for listening. 
Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and a foul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law.